Thank you, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here. Um, so, has anybody heard of the Free Music Archive? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, so a few of you do. Um, my name is Cheyenne Homan. I was the director of the Free Music Archive from 2014 until December 15th, 2018. So if you know any other Free Music Archives that are looking for directors, let me know. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of context. Um, so the Free Music Archive went online in 2009. And it is now home to more than 125,000 pieces of alternatively licensed audio, which took a long time to get to, but was really, really fun. Uh, it's primarily Creative Commons licensed, but there are public domain items in there as well. And I'm here to talk to you about 500 of them. Uh, though we, um, or the archive, it is uh, constantly bringing in new material. And we have some, uh, sorry, some artists that are constantly bringing in CC0 direct modern music. In 2009, the Free Music Archive was founded by WFMU, which is a commercial, non-commercial, freeform radio station in Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, it was developed and intended to be a space for people to come and find curated cu Creative Commons audio. Uh, there are lots and lots of places online now that you can find Creative Commons audio, but this was the only one that was directed with intention to bring venues, music festivals, net labels, actual record labels that create slabs of vinyl, and radio stations to bring recordings in. Uh, in 2018, at the end of the year, it was acquired by KitSplit, which is a platform for camera equipment sharing, and the Free Music Archive, because it is full of music that can be used freely in video, is um, can now considered part of their suite of free creative tools for professional uh, videographers and people who create visual, audiovisual things. So, okay, so um, the Free Music Archive has 3,000 plus public domain tracks. As I said, about 2,500 of those tracks have come from artists or were, were in the public domain already. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about how the Free Music Archive was able to generate and contribute to and engage with the public domain. And this was through song challenges. This was community engagement at its very finest. The song challenges were super fun. You'll see up here a few that I'm not going to get to because they didn't have anything to do with the public domain. But one that I want to mention is the one with the turkey or chicken carcass there. <laughs> um, it was uh, called the Premix. And so this group, Vitamin Pets, released all the stems from their album before it was released and asked people to create their own versions of songs that hadn't been released yet. So it was a lot of fun. And some really, really wild avant-garde stuff came out of that. <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about is the Happy Birthday Song Contest. Some of you may have heard about this. And this actually wasn't something that generated material for the public domain, but it generated a lot of buzz and attention about the fact that Happy Birthday to You was not yet in the public domain. I think somebody's going to talk about that later today, so I'll leave it to them. Uh, though all of the songs that were submitted uh, were released under a Creative Commons attribution license, and more than 150 songs were sent into the archive. Some of them are laden with profanity and are not suitable for children's <laughs> birthday parties. <laughs> However, most of them are, and the ones that, uh, the titles will give you a hint about whether or not they are laden with profanity. Uh, okay, so onto the public domain stuff. In 2013, the Revitalized Music Competition was announced, and this was the first of its kind for the Free Music Archive. Um, we chose four compositions from the public domain, Beautiful Dreamer, God Be With You Until We Meet Again, The Spaniard That Blighted My Life, and Nola. And 26 songs were composed, cover versions of these songs. And um, they were all released back into the public domain using the CC0 Universal License. Next was one of my favorites. It's called Masters Remastered. And it was um, intended to bring new life to classical pieces of music. So music that was definitely in the public domain. You've seen it in Looney Tunes and lots and lots of other productions. They're, you know, musical phrases that people know and love. Uh, some of them are now performed just on a computer keyboard that's been recorded, <laughs> wearing different kinds of gloves, because we can. Uh, we released all of these into the public domain as well, and there are 52 of them. 
The next one was also super fun. In 2015, we asked people to make what we called micro songs. Micro songs were 15 seconds or less, and these were intended to be used in uh, things like Vines and Instagram videos, which at the time were quite short. Uh, everything in the collection is um, CC0, so no rights reserved, and the 350 songs listened to end to end top out at an hour and eight minutes. <laughs> so if you want a very frenetic and interesting listening experience, that's one to check out. Um, in 2015, we also did third and final one of the series, um, a project called Unreal Trailers. And the name Unreal, we know, is spelled <laughs> incorrectly. Um, but it is correct, because we asked people to recut public domain footage that they found online. And Rick's going to talk about some of that footage in just a moment, um, to make a movie trailer for a film that didn't exist. So recut a movie to make you know, a, an instructional film about how to take care of your boat into a horror film, and use uh, music from the Free Music Archive to soundtrack it. This was a lot of work, admittedly, so we only got 14 trailers out of it, but they were really, really interesting, and there's a gallery of them on the Free Music Archive website. In 2017, I'm sure all of you know, the net neutrality battle was really coming to a boil, and so I took an interview that I had done about net neutrality and its importance with Michael Weinberg, friend of the FMA, uh, and cut up, I think, 25 samples. Some of them were like funny quotes that he said, things that could be easily taken out of context in a humorous way, but also educational quotes about the meaning of net neutrality and why it's important. Um, these samples were all released under public domain, and eight people we uh, connected with CC Mixter, which is a Creative Commons remix community, and eight remixes were made in the extremely short <laughs> uh, like week and a half I gave people to do this so we could raise awareness about um, some legislation that needed lots of signatures. And three of them remained in the public domain, which I thought was really generous of those artists because they put a lot of work into those. Last but not least was 2017's audio cookbook. This was interesting because it was not so much taking things from the public domain, though I did link to some really kooky old um, cookbooks so people could get some inspiration. Uh, but it, I was asking people to take recipes and put them to music. And that's because recipes are not covered by copyright. So we got 11 songs out of it, some about beverages, one about pizza, a couple about pie, one about a donut. Uh, and um, the winner was about sun tea, <laughs> how to make sun tea, which isn't much of a recipe, but it was a good song. Um, and that was also donated to the public domain. Um, and so that's about 500 songs that during a time when nothing was coming into the public domain regularly, we were able to engage people and add about 500 audio tracks to the public domain, free for anyone to use. And, you know, they're all still there. <laughs> so if you want to check them out, please go to freemusicarchive.org. And I'd like to thank you for your time. <laughs>